بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد یوسف سلیمی پروفیسر آف ای این ٹی اینڈ ایچ او ڈی ای این ٹی ڈپارٹمنٹ ٹو ڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا یوسٹیکن ٹیوب اینڈ اٹس ڈس آڈرس دیٹ از گلو ایئر اور سیکریٹیو ٹاٹس میڈیا اسٹارٹ کرتے ہیں بسم اللہ ربی شراح علی صدری و یسلی میں نمبری شری ابو کا کالی یوسٹیکن ٹیوب از آلسو کارڈ ٹرنگو ٹیمپینک ٹیوب اور آڈیٹری ٹیوب اٹ کنیٹس دا نیزو فینس وتھ دا ٹیمپینک کیپٹی اور میڈل ایئر کیپٹی وی ہیو آلریڈی ڈسکسڈ ان دا ناٹمی آف دا میڈل ایئر دیٹ دیر آر ٹو اوپننگس آن دا انٹیریئر وال آف دا میڈل ایئر کیپٹی دی اپر ون از فار ٹینسر ٹیمپرائی مسل اینڈ دا لوور ون از فار دا یوسٹیکن ٹیوب and it's a medial end opens on the lateral wall of the uh, nasopharynx 1.5 cm from the inferior turbinate it connects between these two structures it is divided into two parts bony and fibrocartilaginous the part which is towards tympanic cavity that is bony and the part which is towards the nasopharynx is fibrocartilaginous Three muscles are attached to the eustachian tube. You should know the name of these muscles. There is muscles are tensor villi tympani, palatini, levator villi platini, and salpingo pharyngeus. In infants, eustachian tube is wider, shorter, and more horizontal. So, when the patient comes to the ENT consultant and describe about the complaint of the middle ear cavity we should advise that the baby should be feed in the upright position because of these finding because your stricken tube is wider and shorter so the patient should feed in the upward position the now the functions of the your stricken tube has following functions number one ventilation and regulation of the middle ear pressure number 2 protection of the middle ear from the nasopharyngeal sound pressure and reflex of a nasopharyngeal secretion number 3 clearance of the middle ear secretion if eustachian tube is open the secretion goes into the nasopharynx and then downwards into the pharynx and if eustachian tube is blocked there is eustachian tube glue ear disease of glue ear happens functions of the eustachian tube eustachian tube function test eustachian tube function test are seven or eight in number you should simply know the names that is number one wall salva test number 2 polarization test number 3 catheterization number 4 tony bay test number 5 tympanometry number 6 radiological test number 7 sacrin and mesler blue test and number 8 and last one sono sono tubometry you should read the detail of this these tests from your book you should simply know the names of these tests these may be asked in the exam important disease related to the eustachian tube function that is otitis media with effusion its other names are secretory otitis media serous otitis media mucoid otitis media and glue ear these are five in number when we take the exam of oral in viva we should use pathogenesis etiology of the glue ear the main pathogenesis of glue ear is two there is two there is a two uh, mal functioning of the eustachian tube and increased secretory activity of the middle ear cap the mal functioning of the eustachian tube occurs due to 
नंबर वन एडीनाइड हाइपरप्लेजिया नंबर टू क्रॉनिक रिनाइटिस और साइनोसाइटिस नंबर थ्री क्रॉनिक टॉन्सलाइटिस एंड नंबर फोर बिनाइन एंड मेलिग्रेन ट्यूमर्स ऑफ द नेजोफेरिस एंड नंबर फाइव पैलेटल डिफेक्ट्स दैट इज क्लेफ्ट पैलेट एंड पैलेटल पैरालिसिस यू शुड नो ऑल दिस यूजुअली द यंग चिल्ड्रन आर इम्यूनो सप्रेसेंट दे हैव नो मोर इम्यूनिटी सो नेजल एंड throat infection occurs in that and the when you see the chronic hypertrophy tonsillitis and adenitis and the patient also come in the patient the child is he has hearing defect he is not listening properly when he sits against the tv he does not hear properly and when um, he comes from the school and then the teachers say that he is not hearing properly so you should keep this in mind there the eustachian tube is not functioning properly so these disease occur gluia the second one the, uh, uh, the second one is increased secretory activity of the middle ear if the secretory middle ear is secretion are more due to allergy due to unresolved otitis media or viral viral infection and eustachian tube is closed then this disease of glue ear also occurs clinical features of the glue ear it is divided into symptoms and signs symptoms there is this disease this is the disease of children of 5 to 8 years old causing hearing loss insidious in onset and rarely exceed 40 decibel when you see the audiogram of the patient you should see that there is conductive deafness of 40 decibel theek hai and the second one is delayed and defective speech due to not proper hearing the speech is also delayed and uh, number 3 is there is mild earache patients and uh, parents complain that the child has uh, frequent attacks of earache and they know the signs or otoscopic finding of the glue ear these are very important these are asked in the viva question and also in the uh, theory these one are number one tympanic membrane is often dull and opaque with loss of light and flux normally the tympanic membrane is shiny and whitish in color but in glue ear it is it is dull and opaque and number two there is light reflex when you see the tympanic membrane with the otoscope you see a bright area at the anto inferior part of the eustachian tube that is light reflex but in case of eustachian tube dysfunction or glue ear this light reflex is dis disturb number 2 may appear yellow purplish bluish or gray in color you stick it in color may be number 3 thin leashes or blood vessels along the handle of the medius on on the periphery of the eustachian tube this is in contrast to the acute uh, suppurative otitis media catarrhal phase in which all the tympanic membrane is reddish in color but in eustachian tube there are thin leashes of blood vessels along the periphery of the eustachian tube number 4 you can see flu level behind the eustachian tube or bubbles may be seen and number 4 there is restricted mobility of the tympanic membrane if you ask the patient uh, for valve salva and you see with the eustachian tube the moment the mobility of the eustachian tube is not proper now now the diagnosis of the eustachian tube
the diagnosis we have already discussed in every lecture that the diagnosis is made by the history clinical examination and the and the investigation history you should take the history from the parents from the school and some history patient also gives about the complaints of the uh, their child and in clinical examination you should do the examination of the um, ear and also nose and throat and investigation as we already discussed there are routine investigation blood complete examination urine complete examination etc just and the specific investigation in specific investigation the there should be tuning for test it shows conductive hearing loss we should do the rene test weber test or abc test and these tuning theory tuning for test show conductive type of not sensory in order conductive type of hearing loss number two test that is audiometry audiometry is now we perform a test which is called by the audiometer the instrument which we do the audiometry the instrument is called audiometer audiometer it also confirm the conductive hearing loss 20 to 40 decibel number 3 impedance audiometry objective test it is objective test in infants and children and a presence of fluid is indicated by the radius compliance and curve you tympanometer it is also called tympanometer tympanometer is a also as audiometry by number 4 X-ray mastered. We should do the X-ray mastered to show the closing of the cell due to fluid. Now the last part of the disease is the treatment. The treatment, as we discuss every topic, the treatment is medical treatment and surgical treatment. Medical treatment, decongestant. Anti-allergic antibodies and middle ear irrigation by repeatedly performing valsalva maneuver. The second one is surgical treatment. In surgical treatment, there is meringotomy and fluid aspiration, grommet insertion, and tympanotomy or cortical mastectomy, and surgical treatment of the keratotic disease. That is the disease in the Uh, nose and the uh, throat. That is, if chronic hypertrophic tonsillitis are present, then you should do the tonsillectomy of patient. And if adenoid are also present, then you should do the adenoidectomy. And for uh, you should give the treatment of the sinusitis or rhinitis. The surgical, surgical treatment, treatment we make the incision in the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane is uh, incision is given along the endoinferior part of the uh, tympanic membrane, and you stick a tube uh, and a and a float behind the uh, you stick uh, mid uh, tympanic membrane is aspirated by the section section. Okay, and then a grommet is inserted uh, in the incision given. If you uh, do uh, uh, Only say that is the meningotomy and inspiration of the fluid that is wrong. You should it may uh, occur repeatedly, so you should put the grommet in the in the MCQ. This.